My name is John Ivasevich. I am a fortunate 1958 graduate of Aliquippa High School. My first game here was in 1948. I watched the 1952 championship team play, played on the 1955 team, uh, outside of college in the military, probably watched the other game. Late 70s and early 80s, Aliquippa was just becoming on its zenith again as far as becoming the school it is today with the success they had. They were in the 50s, but it had fallen on hard times. We used to be a thriving steel mill town. The steel mill went away, the jobs went away, the businesses went away. The program is looked at as a way to escape the poverty, to escape some of the you know depression, but we always call Aliquippa home. No matter where we go, we always come back. When it came back, 84 was its second WPIL championship, one of many ones to follow under the coach, uh, Don Yanessa. The stadium at that point and the program at that point, if you wanted to see the prototypical high school football game, this is where you came. I would bring friends from out of state. I came from Ohio and they would see a game and they'd describe it as not a football game. This was a war and it, and it was a war zone. And the kids took this as serious as they could as they could take it. And the fans took it as serious as they could take it. They still do. The football program and the community, they're one and the same. Friday nights are unique. Nobody's home. Everybody's at the game. Everyone knows each other. A lot of us are related. We're all related to the football team and the football program. I always say a lot of times in our community, we don't inherit a lot of things. Um, but one thing we all inherit is the Alicopa football program. It is said in uh, many public venues that Aliquippa School District is the only high school with three, three. with three Hall of Famers. You get a lot of good kids, a lot of good athletes, but there's a lot of distractions here. The few that don't go on are successful, like Revis's, Ty Loss, uh, or Ditka's. I was fortunate enough to play with Mike Ditka, who uh, was probably one of the hardest working people I've ever seen and just a great, great person. The history of Mike Ditka speaks for itself. I was fortunate to watch Ty Law grow up, mature as a high school player, be great as a college player, be super great as an NFL player. I also had the great fortune of watching Darrell Revis grow up with fantastic family, a unique and special athlete. We've had a number of athletes go on to college and then to the NFL. I don't want to miss any names, but off the top of my head, I can think of starting with Mike Dick, uh, uh, Sean Gilbert, Ty Law, Charles Fisher, David Askew, Tommy Campbell, Jonathan Baldwin, Darrell Revis. We're such a small community that's saying a lot. I think more so than what they do is give our young kids a sense of direction. I know we talk a lot about their accomplishments on the field, but what they've accomplished off the field is, is even more so impressive, being good fathers, good businessmen. Coach Warfield is a, a graduate of Aliquippa as well. He has family here in the community. A lot of our staff or alumni who have played on a college level or further, came home to lend their expertise to help you know train and support our, our current athletes. This is an absolute phenomenal, phenomenal coaching staff. Coach Warfield, who has done an absolute phenomenal job, probably one of the most impressive young coaches I've ever seen, organization-wise, team discipline-wise, team academic expectations. I'm fortunate and blessed enough to, to be a part of watching those guys coach and seeing the kids mature. Under the leadership of Coach Warfield, we're seeing the kids uh, doing more community-based things, doing more environmental things as far as uh, uplifting the community and also working to always have a positive spin on the program. I think it starts with the youth program. I, I think all the way up is instilled of it in us. So the culture is um, we, we go out every day and work hard. I think it's expectations. Every little kid sees someone who played before them and they are expected to live up 
to that standard. You can't sit down and have a meal without talking about what your uncle or what your cousin or what your grandfather did. Everybody wants to be the guy in their family. I think what we're trying to do, trying to accomplish now, is change that narrative to a degree, is that we're more than just good athletes and we're more than just winning football games, is that we're good students, you know, we're good kids. Football is the heart of the city. That's what makes it beat, even when it's not football season. Now they have their new stadium, and it's just going to be the center now of this city. It was time. It's been long overdue. Um, I know when I first took the job, I, I, my first day on the job, I went down there. And, you know, being from Alacoba, I remember how it was when I was in high school. Um, Coach Anessa had it with plush. It was nice carpet. Everything was always taken care of. But when I came in, unfortunately, I mean, we didn't have hot water in, in the field house. And then with the blessing of the school board and with the, you know, tremendous help of Dr. Woods, um, we were able to accomplish, uh, you know, getting some much needed renovations, new turf, new lights, new scoreboard, new stands. You see their faces the first time we practice on the turf. You know, they were elated. I was part of the conversation from the beginning where we talked about wanting to replicate or just make the current footprint revived. Jim and Connor and, and Field Turf, you know, has really been great. We had other options, but once I spoke to Jim, I immediately said, I talked to, called Dr. Woods, I said, this is the guy and this is the team we needed to work with. So I highly recommend them, not just for us, the turf, but just the people who they are. 